All right, so welcome to this video tutorial for uh, R.C. Hibbler's uh, Engineering Mechanics Statics textbook. So we have this problem from chapter six, and it's the first fundamental problem that concerns um, maybe what we can call the method of joints here. And I just wanted to talk about the method of joints before we dive into this problem. Um, I, I feel the main kind of concept to understand uh, for the method of joints here is, is this idea that I've written in the, the top right where I've said all of the following are equilibrium. <clears throat> the members, the joints and the truss as a whole. So what do I mean by that? By the members, I'm talking about each of these uh, at least lines on the diagram here. Right, That's what's meant by the members. Uh, the joints, I'm talking about these points here which are connecting the members. Um, and the truss as a whole, we're talking about this whole system um, where there are um, external forces acting on the truss, which uh, sum to zero when you add them all together, hence why it's in equilibrium. And there are also internal forces going on inside the truss, which, which we can neglect when concerning the equilibrium state of the, the truss as a whole. Right. Um, so there are three things that are in equilibrium here. The idea then is that if I were to draw a free body diagram of each individual member, each individual joint, or each or, or the truss as a whole, the external forces acting on the truss, um, the forces acting there would sum to zero. That 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 thing would be in equilibrium. Um, so uh, let's get started with this problem. The first thing to consider really is um, the forces acting on the truss. Um, I'm going to draw a separate free body diagram here and um, start labeling them up. So let's go ahead and do that. Now that we have all of the external forces added to our diagram here, let's consider what's going on internally. Now, uh, this is the reason why this is called the method of joints. Okay, um, So when we consider the forces acting internally, we can do that by kind of inspecting each joint seemingly one by one or in isolation. Before we consider uh, each joint one by one or in isolation, um, there's something we want to first understand about these um, external forces acting on the truss here. So on the left at point A, we have um, what's described as a roller or roller support. Um, the only kind of force or external force that that roller can enact on the truss is this upward um, reaction force okay um, it's on wheels so it wouldn't offer any kind of resistive force in the horizontal direction and um, uh, unless the wheels are glued to the ground which we're going to assume it's not um, it can't offer kind of a downward um, resistive force so the only force that this this roller can kind of offer is is this upward reactive force here okay to stop the truss kind of falling through the ground i suppose on on the right here we have what's called a fixed support uh, which means uh, this support can offer both a kind of vertical and horizontal uh, resistive force importantly um we don't necessarily need uh we we don't necessarily know which way this fc comma y is uh, uh, going we, we, don't, we don't know its direction, so it could be acting up, uh, although later in the problem we could discover actually, you know, it's acting down. Um, we could discover that um, depending on FA comma Y, uh, or, or say we get a negative value through some of our calculations. Um, but for now, we're just going to say it's acting up. Anyway, let's consider what's going on internally then. Like I say, we want to consider each, jo each joint in isolation in a sense. Um, I'm going to consider point A here. The reason I'm going to consider point A um, is because we don't know what's going on at B. There's there's loads of forces going on at C. There's loads of forces going on at D. At A, we know this, this reactive force is acting up, um, and we only have one uh, way of kind of countering that, which is the... Um, 
vertical component of our AD here. Okay, so we can say AD is acting uh, down and to the left. Um, okay, well, since that's acting to the left, uh, AB here must be acting to the right, right? Um, now, since I mentioned that the members are all in equilibrium, well, if this force is acting uh, down and to the left here, well, this force here must be acting up and to the right, okay? That we can also describe as AD. Uh, here we've got AB on the other side of the member. Um, we must have then um, BC countering that and BC here. Notice how the problem's just kind of unraveling once we've, we've solved here at, at joint A. BD we can describe as what's called a zero uh, force member. Um, since there's no kind of other vertical or diagonal um, member to kind of counter um, the possible vertical force acting here um, at, at joint B. Um, let's have a look at joint D. So we know we've got a 450 pound external force acting to the left, a internal force here acting to the right. Well, um, we understand that CD is acting down and to the right here because that is countering the kind of up upward um, component of AD here. Okay, so this is acting up and to the right. This CD is act then must be acting down and to the right. Okay, uh, and so we have uh, CD here. Okay, so we kind of understand the directionality of all of these internal forces. Um, Again, we want to look at each joint on its own or in isolation. I am particularly keen on joint D. The reason I'm keen on joint D right now is because um, it has two unknowns. Okay, if I look at joint A, um, we have three unknowns, FA comma Y, A, D and A, B. Uh, here we have um, two unknowns but they're kind of equal to each other so we only have one relation um, uh, and at, at joint c uh, we have four unknowns so i'm interested in in uh, joint d here okay uh, let's start by uh, resolving vertically here so i'm going to say the sum of forces in the y are equal to zero this 450 pound force doesn't have a vertical component, but these AD and CD forces do, um, I can say the vertical component of AD or AD sine 45, um, since uh, this kind of angle here is 45 degrees, uh, is equal to uh, CD sine 45. Um, we could cancel the sine 45s out and say that therefore AD is equal to CD. Okay, uh, let's move on and resolve horizontally. So we can say in the horizontal, we're in equilibrium two. We have uh, 450 acting to the left, and we have the horizontal components of AD and CD acting to the right. So um, since we know that AD and CD take the same value as each other, I'm going to describe this as 2 AD uh, cos 45. Okay, we can rearrange this. We can say, uh, therefore, AD is equal to uh, 450 over 2 sine 2 cos 45, uh, which is equal to 318.2 pounds. Okay. Um, before we move on to the other members, uh, note the question asks, state if the members are in tension or compression. Um, we want to use this idea here so we, we can effectively say uh, that a member that, that has internal forces looking like that is in compression and uh, a member that has internal forces acting on it like that um is in tension um this may seem counterintuitive uh 
you know, that should be compression, that should be uh, tension, right? The reason this is counterintuitive is actually, um, maybe I misspoke earlier, I meant to say that these forces are describing what's acting on the joint, um, not the member. So, um, you know, if I've got this uh, force, say, acting on the joint, this, this kind of down and, and right force acting here, this CD force, then what's actually acting on the member is kind of the countering um, force. So uh, uh, actually, you know, these forces are describing what's happening on the joints. If you wanted to show the forces acting on the members, you'd have to flip those arrows around, if that makes sense. Okay, so we, we have this idea here, right? Let's say if this is intentional compression, then uh, evidently, the arrows are going like that, that we can call um, compression. Comp, let's call it that. Uh, okay. We've, uh, and, and we can also say, since uh, AD and CD are equal to each other, we can say CD is equal to uh, 318.2 pounds. Uh, and that is... Uh, in uh, they're, they're acting in on each other so we can say that's in tension okay let's move on then um we we kind of um we've solved for ad we've solved for cd we kind of want to solve for a b and b c here um looking at this uh, we found ad here so at joint A, we effectively have two unknowns now, since we just found AD. Let's go ahead then and solve at joint A. So joint A, uh, let's start by resolving uh, vertically again. We can say the sum of the forces acting, uh, the sum of the vertical forces is equal to zero. Therefore, we have FA comma Y acting up there. FA comma Y and we have the um, vertical component of AD acting down. So we could say F A comma Y here is equal to uh, A D sine 45 degrees. Um, we know AD, it's 318.2. Um, so we could say this is equal to 318.2 sine 45. Uh, and we can say F A comma Y, wow, F A comma Y, uh, is equal to uh, 225 once you put that into your calculator. Okay. Um, awesome. So we've determined FA comma Y. Um, we can now use, uh, we can now uh, resolve horizontally uh, to find AB. So we can say uh, the force is acting in the horizontal direction, sum to zero. Therefore, uh, the we have the horizontal component of AD acting to the left, so we can say AD cos 45 uh, is equal to AB. Okay, now uh, again, uh, AB is equal to 318.2 uh, cos 45. Um, you could put that, put that in your calculator and you'd find that AB is equal to 225 again here. Um, note, however, you didn't necessarily need to use your calculator since sine 45 is equal to cos 45. So this idea here is actually the same as this idea here. So we have AB uh, as 225 pounds here. The forces are looking like that, so we can say this is in tension. Uh, now we just need to solve for BC. Well, evidently, AB is equal to 225. Um, uh, so therefore, BC must be equal to 225. Okay, so I can say BC is equal to 225 pounds. And again, that is in tension. And uh, we can solve for FC comma Y here. Um, we don't necessarily need to 
um, do any resolving. We can kind of solve for FC comma Y and FC comma X by inspection. Since we understand that the truss as a whole is in equilibrium, well, okay. Uh, horizontally, we've got this 450 pound force acting externally on the truss to the left. And the only other external force acting horizontally is, is this FC comma uh, X here. Um, they, they should counter each other then. We, we can say, uh, therefore, FC comma X is equal to 450 pounds. And uh, using the exact same idea, we have this 225. Uh, we determined a FA comma Y to be 225 pounds earlier. Um, if that's acting up, then actually this FC comma Y should be acting down. Right, so let's just rub that out and put in a new, if it'll actually let me, a new arrow in there. Uh, and I can say uh, F uh, C comma Y is equal to two to five pounds. Uh, and we solve for everything there. OK, um, so if you have any questions or comments about that problem, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section down below. Otherwise, thank you very much for watching.